right? So with this card, um, the Queen of Pentacles reversed. Um, as you can see, it's a beautiful queen and she's beautifully adorned. She's eating her grapes. And um, unfortunately, this card is, um, it was reversed. So it says um, that in the reversed Queen of Pentacles, she becomes disconnected with her positive light and po positive energy. And she can become destructive and completely self-absorbed. Basically, um, her generosity and everything about her turns selfish and even narcissistic, envious of others who have success. And um, if it seems greater than theirs, um, you know, it can cause her to be jealous. And um, it shows this little white rabbit here on the side and to me they say this has to do with fertility of course the rabbit does have to do with fertility but I feel like um, it could mean that you've fallen down a rabbit hole <laughs> okay. loses her ability to take care of herself and her surroundings so it takes a certain amount of focus and mental agility to really put yourself on the um, up and up so let's take a look here at the Prince of Pentacles and um, the Prince of Pentacles is I just want to take a look at this sorry all right so I really love this new deck I get I just got so just bear with me I'm checking out these um, you know, I was just trying to see if there was any symbolism um, in these cards that I might have missed when I was looking through them before. Anywho, this one's upright, and this has to do with um, a hardworking person, very productive, although you couldn't tell it um, by looking at this. Looks like he's just riding along, right, on his high horse, <laughs> but... Um, conservationism, routine, productivity, self-discipline, boredom, just feeling um, emotionally stuck or um, maybe a little OCD. See how he's holding this pinnacle there? So um, it says that this one is, he sits on a stationary horse. So even though it looks like the horse is moving, he must just be getting a little antsy and irritable because um, it says that the knight's ready to go and willing to do the work and realize his dreams, but even if it's repetitive and dull. So sometimes, you know, even if you do get your dream job, your dream um, position, you're still going to have to monotonously do it repetitively in order to become good at it no matter what it is and um, here we go the Prince of Cups is your future and the Prince of Pentacles is your current situation so Pentacles is um, earth signs such as Capricorn Taurus and Virgo and um, the first card was also Pentacles and so you must have some earth signs near you and then um, we've got the Prince of Cups, and this symbolizes, um, you can see that this looks like an angel possibly on this, like maybe an angel of death or something. <laughs> Swings are really creepy looking, right? And um, it says here that the Knight of Cups is... Um, kind of like the Prince of Cups here is the Knight of Cups and um, it has to do with classical romance and um, knight in shining armor so the cups are always more about um, you know the cup being half full uh, being very creative romantic and charming and um, 
just having, um, you know, in full regalia, he's got his whole regalia on, like he's ready to go into battle, he's prepared, okay? Um, he's charging forward, and instead of, um, but he's moving slowly and gracefully, and he's given air and calmness and peace, and, um, it looks like there's a beautiful, um, waterfall in the background, and this has to do with the emotions and the imagination and new life force. So that's the second card here that had something to do with life force or fertility. Um, and what we're going to do is I have one more, this, this crystal card, this crystal come with these cards, the one that I picked out of my trinkets and this necklace, which is a vampire necklace from, um, I think that I bought this when, when true blood was like super popular <laughs> and, um, and I just made this Illuminati deck here. So let's pull one of these cards for, uh, solidifier. The God of Meditation. Vikings. Alright, I haven't done the art on these yet, but it's a Norse god, and uh, Forseti is the name. Alright, so let me see. I know that Forseti had to do with, um, you know, he's like the ruler or somewhat like of a like a um president and and he's the god of justice all right so maybe it is that you're looking for justice um something could have happened that is making you feel like you deserve justice um And it also says that Forseti has to do with the um, presiding one. So presiding over a flock, typically. So we may have um, this person or this uh, particular card here. This may be someone who's very communica uh, communicating. And they may have like a congregation or followers. Maybe they're... Um, some kind of YouTuber or some type of person who has uh, followers. All right, so that's our um, first reading. Let's round that off with a Grim card and see if we can't get a um, just an idea of what the the meaning of the story, the moral of the story. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so congested, y'all. My whole yard is completely flooded and it looks like, um, it looks like some kind of mess out there. <laughs> so we got Cinderella as your Grim card. It's not what you know, but who you know. So I have learned recently that your very close friends and family might know more about your situation that would help you than you might give them um, time to talk, you know, about. So sometimes it's good to reach out to your friends, family, and people who you haven't talked to in a while. And, um, you know, they might be able to shed some light on uh, something that can help you. Um, Alright, so that's our first little reading with the um, Tarot Illuminati. I was really digging the reading I did for myself. Um, I know you're not supposed to do that, but I do. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pull the number two reading right here. And I'm going to shuffle it. Now this is the Fairy Wick of Tarot. And I happen to, um, whoa, I dropped one and bent it. Oh no. Okay. 
So we've got the mother goddess. We're going to put her down because um, I just smashed her between my legs uh, when I dropped the card and smashed it, trying to keep it from hitting the floor. So this definitely has to do with fertility. You can see right here on the front there's a baby. And um, I typically like to keep, you know what, I might keep my cards down. You know what, I might keep these cards down so that we can line them up because look that's the second card about fertility and how crazy is that all right so we've got the queen of pentacles they said that this one right here from the first um section had to do with fertility and then we pull this one and it lines up exactly with the fertility all right so that's how we're going to do it this week it's a little different than um the traditional reading but i really like the problem reaction solution and it um, turns out pretty interesting that way. So let's do it. So then we have the Prince of Pentacles. Plus when you have to reiterate, it helps you to kind of remember these cards when they're new to you. Prince of Pentacles and the Six of Dawn, which is also Pentacles. Six of Pentacles, as you can see there. They're laying down on the table. And I'm going to pull one more card. And this is for your future. It's going to go right here next to the Prince of Cups. And it's the Seeker. So the Seeker is, um, as you can see, you know, they've got multiple faces. And they're looking in all directions at the same time. And um, it looks like they're getting attacked by a bunch of little people. Maybe some little fairies or gnomes or elves or el maybe elves. Okay, and uh, let's take a look here because um, the Mother Goddess is one of my favorite cards here. So I'm going to read it to you straight from the book and I'm going to let you um, take a look at these cards together. Alright, so the Mother Goddess is basically like, the Mother Goddess is... Um, when I think of the mother goddess, I think of if I'm outside and I am literally raking the yard and I try to imagine what the mother goddess is, I just imagine that the ground, everything growing out of it is the mother goddess's hair. So I always do a really good job raking out all that trash out of the yard and make sure that the soil is nice and fertile. And as long as you have fertile ground, then everything will work out. So let's see what the um, Mother Goddess says here. The wisdom of the feminine principle in life is at work in your life. Open to the fertility of the land and find abundance in your life. Allow creativity to flow through you. A call to return to nature. In quiet meditation, open to the stars above your head to receive the wisdom of the goddess. Align with your inner child and find bliss. Alright, so that is absolutely beautiful. I love it. And it goes right along with this other queen of pentacles that we pulled on the first um, round. And then we got the six of dawn. And... Um, I just wanted to show you all this. You can't really see it that well because the light keeps reflecting down. But this is our reading so far. The top ones are number one and the next ones are number two. And then we've got the six of Dawn. We're going to cover that one real quick. I'm going to just let you look at it while I read it. So Dawn or Pentacles. And this is like Celtic, I believe, some type of, some type of um, fairy. Six. Just a moment, I'm almost there. All right, so material wealth. 
And it looks like this definitely does have to do with material wealth. I mean, look at this fancy table with all these fancy chairs, which somehow even look like, you know, they're illuminated. Look at that one on the right. It's light shining in the door. I see it looks like a light, though, at the table, doesn't it? Okay, so anywho, it says, Charity comes, gifts, material gain, help from someone. This card warns against excessive expenditure of resources. Only balance brings regrowth. Only heart, body, soul combined shows us the way. Alright, so that's pretty good. I like that card. And that goes right there next to the Prince of Pentacles, who is... You know, he's kind of like so slow to the battle. He's just um, prepared. He's got all everything on, but he's not rushing into anything. He is really thinking about his options before he jumps into anything. And then um, we've got the Prince of Cups right next to... the seeker all right and if you take a look at the seeker oh that's creepy right <clears throat> all right so the seeker says the Am amadan do sacred fool of fairy has perhaps called to you time to visit the wilderness and reconnect with the soul of nature a new journey is at hand, one that will guide you down the pathway of the fairy. A true initiation is at hand, but first you must enter the labyrinth of the mind and find your heart. All that you need in life, you already carry with you. Let the spirit guide you. There you go. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Alright, so let's go ahead and pull one more witchy card to go with that one. Uh-oh, look. Look. There's that one card just sitting over there. It must have stayed behind when I moved it. It's the Three of Domin. Alright, let's take a moment and read that one because... It accidentally got left behind. Alright, so Domin is Pentacles again, so that's Earth Signs, Virgo Taurus, and Capricorn. And for the Three of Domin. I have to say, these pictures on this deck don't really give you very much uh, info, do they? Sorry, y'all. I need to go in and, like, make these easier to find somehow. I actually put little page markers on there, but it just doesn't really help. Oh, here we go. Um, the Spiral of Life. Okay, so I really love how it's got the piece of wood there. Because that's why I'm hanging in there to tell you about it. And it says, The Spiral of Life. Commercial success through effort and training, work undertaken and performed with others, a joint effort or a partnership, skilled labor, crafts. We come from the stars. We come from the stars. Shining down on the earth. Alright, 
so that's beautiful I'm really digging that and now we can pull one more card from the witchy deck here we're gonna get all the cards this time So we've got courage, pepper, basil, chives, horseradish, nettle, and pepper. These things can all help you to come up with some courage spells. But let's do more than just that. If you want to set intentions to awaken, Hoodoo says to use a Gris Gris bag. And don't worry, Hoodoo is not voodoo. It says put this under your pillow for dreams. Alright, and all you need is mugwort, wormwood, St. John's wort, and set your intentions and wake up, awaken, mode it be. Alright, so at the end, say, awaken, mode it be, and then it will bring to fruition whatever it is that you've been trying to accomplish. Alright. I feel like that didn't really give me what I was looking for, so... Um, I'm going to pull one more because the next one is the veil. The physical world and the spiritual realm overlap, but it is most thin at Halloween. Alright, see how I spelled it wrong and had to mark it out? Isn't that hilarious? Okay, so there is a veil and, um... You know, sometimes it gets a little bit, you know, thin. Alright, so let's take a look at the angel cards. There we go. The angel kindness cards. I try to put them so you can see it in the light, but you just literally cannot see it over there. Well, anywho, there's your angel wings and your crystal. Alright, so, so far we've got the queen of pentacles, we've got the mother goddess, lots of fertility, lots of money, hard time, uh, working hard, working very hard, planning very hard, and seeking very hard right here and basically that card just said that it's already within you whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish all right so your angel card is Learn from the way the wildflowers grow. Matthew 6.28 And it says, Our lives have seasons. One day you will look back on the time and realize it happened in order for you to grow. Alright. Alright, so that goes with the, um, the Queen of Pentacles. And... The Prince of Pentacles. We've got nobody's life is perfect, but when you're going through tough times, keep on going. It's brighter ahead. All right, so just keep looking for that light at the end of the tunnel. And um, my best advice to anyone struggling is instead of spending your money, your extra money on 
fast food and junk food. Invest in yourself. Invest in your future. It says, okay, so that um, that last one about nobody's perfect, that goes right there next to the Prince of Pentacles, who is just thinking and thinking, and he's just trying so hard to figure out what the next move is. And then we've got the refined table here um, with money and the Six of Pentacles, or Domin. And then we've got the Seeker, and you know all eyes looking every direction and the prince of cups who is um you know he's already got everything that he's looking for and he's just kind of waiting it out but in the meantime it says that you stand the tallest when you're on your knees in prayer okay so um in other words stay humble and stay humble if you're not much of a prayer type of person then um you know basically i mean i, I really meditate I, I really believe in meditation for um you know a higher consciousness all right and one more We've got the Shaman Oracle, the Mystical Shaman Oracle. This is my actual manifestation bottle that we're looking at, and I absolutely love just uh, put in some water and crystals in it and put it in front of the window. Usually I have it in the south window, but south window is being used right now. So we're to the west. And for your first card, we've got the serpent. The serpent. Okay. All right, so next to the Mother Goddess and the Queen of Pentacles, we've got the Serpent. So what do these all have in common? Um, they definitely have the power. And it's upright, so give me one second. It says... The serpent is the life force of Mother Earth. The coiled serpent of the Kundalini brings passion, healing, and, renew and renewal. She offers us the fruit of the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden and reminds us to shed our past um, the way that she sheds her tired old skin. The serpent comes to offer you the forbidden fruit that will set your passion and creativity free. Okay, so the invitation says, the serpent power of the Kundalini is stirring within your chakras, gently asking you to embrace it and its mystery. Shed the old skin that you have been so attached to and welcome the vulnerable pink underbelly of that will bring you the fresh experience of your life. Your passion and sexuality are awakened. And trust the wisdom of the serpent to transform your sensual energies into beautiful, original manifestation. Okay, so the most all cultures of the world um, have serpents as their light bringer. All right. And, um, so it is kind of strange that the bad guy in our culture is kind of like the good guy in other, in other, uh, cultures. So the serpent, um, 
I know that the earth type cards, they don't really see the serpent as a bad, a bad thing. It's just the, the inner, the opposite. Okay. So let's take a quick look at one more. So that one's going to go right there with the mother goddess and the queen of pentacles. Serpent, the mother, mother goddess and the queen of pentacles. And the prince of pentacles, the six of Domin, and the child. Hmm. All right, so let's take a look here. The child knows the way to joy and happiness. The child offers the return of a second innocence, a time born of wisdom, and not naivete. The card allows you to correct your course and offers you a second chance. It brings you the possibility of redemption and entering into heaven while on earth. The invitation. The child is here to release you from the habit of being yourself and to help you acquire beginner's mind so that you can see life for the first time. Remain open to learning and discovery. Who is your spouse or your partner today? Can you see them with new fresh eyes? Who is looking back at you in the mirror in the morning? Become a mystery unto yourself and reconnect with the sense of childlike wonder. All right. I love that. That's beautiful. All right. And that's going to go right there next to the Prince of Cups and the Seeker card. Let me show you. The child, the seeker. It's all about abandoning what you know as yourself and changing to something different. All right. And one more. Flow. All right, let me see. The essence. There is a natural movement of events in the world. You can see it in the phenomena such as the tide, the ebb, the flow, the ocean, the rivers, and they rise up from the earth and then flow to the sea. The symbol of flow represents the effortless and natural movement towards certain destinations and it signifies an ability to gracefully move around obstacles and remind you of the sense of allowing. The invitation. When the flow comes to visit, it's a sign that your intentions have been in motion. Now is the time to allow nature to run its course. You are being called to effortless movements in the path of the least resistance. It's like being within music, flowing within partnerships. Think of the artist who creates without guile or craft calling creativity up from the soul and 
bringing it to life without effort. You are called to be like a river, knowing the fulfillment of the destiny is assured. Enjoy the ride. I feel like this is like um, the idea of doing art without a muse. Um, just sitting down and drawing just anything um, until you see something. It doesn't necessarily mean that it has to make any sense. Um, just freehand it. Just freehand whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish and see what comes of it. Okay, and one more. We've got the crow. All right. And the crow is number 13, just in case that has some significance to you. When I was a kid, I was certain that the number 13 was bad. Every month I would mark it on the calendar. Every time something horrible would go wrong, it was something to do with 13. All right, the essence. The crow is the keeper of the universal law, the law of truth. The crow teaches us to walk our talk and to find congruence between who we say that we are and who we really know ourselves to be. The winged one insists that we speak truth, that we create truth instead of searching for it, and that we bring truth to every situation that we find ourselves in. The invitation. When you speak the truth and practice the truth, eventually... Everything that you say becomes true, and the power to co-create with the truth is universal law. Correct what is untrue in your life without judgment. Let the truth set you free. All right. So basically, I feel like this is just saying don't be a fake, which, um, you know, I don't think anybody deliberately becomes a fake. I think that... Um, that you get put in situations where being yourself um, makes you less popular or less accepted or less um, whatever. So you you change one little thing about yourself. Maybe it's your accent or maybe it's your clothes that you wear or whatever it is. But... Um, you know, if you start to doing that, then the people won't like you for who you really are. They will like you for who that they think that you are. And that never really works out. So um, I find that even if people don't particularly like um, something about me, that I don't really bend to make them happy because, you know, it's not really going to make a difference in the long run. They're still going to wish that you were the person they want you to be. But they'll adjust. People will adjust. And they might learn something, right? Okay, so let's see. Um, the last deck of cards is the Narcissist deck. And let me try to organize these cards a little bit here for you. So your first Narcissist card is going to go right here next to the Queen of Pentacles, the Serpent, and the Mother Goddess. So 
I feel like um, whenever you are previously a religious um, person who comes from Christianity, you um, you always think that the serpent is Satan and things of that nature. And um, but there are there's a lot more to the story than just that. So I would say um, to definitely do your research and um, about the past and it, it kind of really helps you to understand the bigger picture. Um, devil's advocate. <laughs> okay. All right, and then we've got the flow, the Prince of Cups, the Seeker, the Crow, the Three of Dawn, and I thought I had another card over here, but. So, all right, so under the serpent, the narcissist card for the, um, this person being probably representing a woman, um, probably someone who's maybe trying to reproduce, having some issues with fertility, and the narcissist card is... Romantic success. Romantic success. Alright, so sometimes romantic success, um, you know, a lot of people will go into a relationship, a narcissistic relationship, thinking that uh, everything is perfect, but in reality, um, they don't realize that they've laid down with the devil. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, next. <laughs> All right, so the Six of Dawn, the Prince of Pentacles, and the Child. The Narcissist card that goes with this is... Um, I think this is the Overt Narcissist card. So if you have an overt narcissist who is um, either like a parent or um, a, a boss who's lording their power over you, um, you know, you might have to resort to being fake, which is funny because we were just talking about not being fake over here on the crow. But this says that you may have to compliment this narcissist and or... Um, compare them to famous people to get on their good side. All right. So this is Dr. Grande's video about what do you do if you're under, um, direct supervisor of a narcissist? Um, well, they might be acting like a child or even, um, someone who's so well to do that they feel like they're so much better than you and you feel like you have to change everything. Um, look at you, thinking about it, just trying to figure out what to do with your money. Alright, so we got lots of coins here. I just want to say that I've recently invested in Bitcoin. <laughs> Come on over. <laughs> All these coins got me thinking about whether my coins are going up. <laughs> Alright, so then we've got the Flow, the Prince of Cups, and the Seeker. And the Narcissist card that goes with this is Why Do We Self-Sabotage? Alright, so here we go with the flow. So this was talking about, you know, just going with the flow. If you're an artist, um, don't feel like you have to, um, you know, set trends um, alongside everybody else and what they're trending you know you don't have to follow the crowd you can do what you want to do and um you know you might be a strong angel riding your knight celtic horse into the wind all right but um self-sabotaging here's some excuse 
here's some reasons why, um, you know, you're about to get the raise that you're, you're just been dying for, and then you just quit your job. That's definitely self-sabotage, okay? Making excuses not to go to the gym. <laughs> for me, it's making excuses not to get up and do my artwork. Parent ignored me. All right, so this is the thing about um, S. Truthless at YouTube. He says um, that, he, you know, if you have a parent that's a piece of shit, I mean crap, um, then they, they try to make you feel like you're a bad, bad person or like you're not worthy or something of that nature. And, and you get that in your head. You don't think that there's something wrong with your parent. You think that there's something wrong with you. But, um, he says to stop stifling your success. Make a list. Take a piece of paper. Put a line down the center. Happy, um, list your negatives on one side and your positives on the opposite side. Answer why do I deserve better in the final column. And conflict internal. So there's some type of internal conflict that's causing you this deep, deep self-doubt. So I need you to just wipe that self-doubt away. Even after you've done this, even after you've done this exercise, I need you to invest in yourself. Go take the time to invest in yourself. Um, you know, listen to Jiminy Cricket. That's your inner worth. Okay. Finally, we've got the crow, the three of domin, which has to do with the spiral of life, DNA, the seeker. All right. So these all have to do with being, this, this is like the mask. I feel like, oh, okay. For example, when I moved to the South, I, um, you know, I didn't have a very thick southern accent. I was from New Mexico and I probably sounded a little bit Spanish. <laughs> and um, I didn't really bend to sound like a southerner like some of my other kinfolk did. Well, it happens the more you're around people who have a thick southern accent, but um, you know, if you don't bend to it, especially in sales, it can cost you a sale. It can cost you, but, you know, is it worth it to lose yourself, to please everybody else? Um, and, you know, sometimes, like I said, you have to do what you have to do. But, you know, this card right here says that everything that you need to know, you already know. It's already within you. And that's like your Akashic Records, right? Um, what your ancestors did. Everything in your DNA is passed down through your ancestors. All you have to do is spark that light. And uh, it will help you figure out what it is that you're missing. So let's pull our Narcissus card for the Crow, Three of Dawn, and the Seeker. The Narcissus card that goes along with the Crow is Long-Term Effects of Manipulation or Physical Rejection. So if you've experienced um, physical rejection or emotional rejection, um, love rejection, devaluation, criminal behavior, boundaries, pushing past boundaries, cognitive dissonance, or cognitive distortions, uh, it can cause a lot of long-term issues, shock, numbness, anger, you know, lethargy, emotional numbness, perception of meaninglessness, physical rejection. All right, so um, whatever it is, if, if like it could be something that you've done to yourself that's caused you um, some kind of inner pain, or it could be something that someone else has done to you. But for whatever reason, if you're if you're feeling this abuse uh, abuses situation. You definitely need to um, reach out for help, especially if there's substance abuse, rehabilitation, things of that nature. If it's if it's necessary, 
go ahead and do it. Take, take advantage of the system. That's why it's there. It's because somebody else has already been through this and they said, gee, uh, if only I had had someone help me. If only I had had someone who could have, you know, gave me the right way. All right. So just remember that everything in, in you, you know, is already within you. Okay. And let's pull one manifestation card because I totally forgot to pull manifestation cards. So let's take a quick look. Oh, Law of Attraction popped out. The Law of Attraction. All right, so basically the law of attraction says give tenfold and you will receive it. And your next manifestation card is be happy. Emanate confidence. Write down your affirmations. So an affirmation is... It's like whenever you are trying to um, show someone, sh show yourself, um, maybe you're trying to quit smoking, then when you go to sleep at night, you would say, I don't want a cigarette. I don't need cigarettes. And, or you could even get a recording of someone who's, you know, got some degree in hypnotherapy <laughs> And they will go through and record it on the subliminal so you can't even hear it in the tones, but it's underneath, it, your subconscious can hear it, okay? And that is how it um, saves it to your, you know, your subconscious is like your sleep. So when you're dreaming, it's brainwashing you, all right? So raise your vibrations, by allowing yourself to be higher on the plane, use affirmations and meditation. All right, affirmations again. All right, so you can go look up guided meditations or guided affirmations, and there are plenty of people out there who absolutely, I could, I could even do you one. Um, when I used to sell phones, <laughs> I worked at AT&T, you know, you had to have your stats really high and they would throw such a fit that if you didn't have, um, you know, good vibes, <laughs> you gotta be positive 24 seven. You gotta, um, make everybody happy on every call. So you literally just, you know, do everything you can do to, to make that, um, make that call so, the best so that you can get the best ratings, the best statistics, the best rays. Um, and I would literally ride to work every morning listening to affirmations. All right. So I hope this reading resonates with you and I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, let's pull one more grim card because I've got a few more minutes and it says, Alice in Wonderland, just do it. Whatever it is that you want to do and you've been holding back on, it's time to start investing in you. Jump down the rabbit hole. You know, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Just do it. Let's do one more. jumped out. Clarity from the DIY Oracle. Clarity. Alright, let's do one more. So you might have been searching for clarity. This one jumped out again. 
So I feel like this is from God. It says King Philip the um, Fifth of France was responsible for the destruction of the Knights Templar. The day that they were killed was Friday the 13th. Where's that creepy number again? And it's right there next to the 13th card, which was the crow. See it? Okay. That's creepy. Alright, so we've got the 13th card, the crow. We've got the seeker, the daman, the physical rejection, abusive relationship, and King Philip who destroyed the Knights Templar. Okay. <sighs> the Knights Templar were, you know, the Illuminati back in the day. Uh-oh, I have one more card jump out. Alright, the last card is Serendipity, Synchronicity, and Lucky. And it's got a four-leaf clover right on the back. All right. So there you go. Um, it's pretty clear right there. Pretty clear. The angels are talking to you, right? <laughs> Nobody's perfect. All right. So I hope this resonates with you. Um... And I know it's a little different from my normal re readings, so I'll put the um, links in the bottom there. And I hope that uh, it's something that you know that you like. Please leave me a comment and let me know if it does resonate with you. And see you next week.